You can't make people respect your boundaries and you can't make them care about what you need. So people ask me all the time, how do I make that happen? And I totally understand why you would want to be able to do that, but my answer is that you can't. And for people who grew up with abuse and neglect and who as a result have to basically like teach themselves as adults how to interact with people, how to set boundaries, what is a boundary? What do you do when someone doesn't respect your boundary? Well, it, it seems like the problem is other people. And yes, sometimes the problem is other people. For example, if they attack you or violate you, sometimes, yes, there's a violation of a boundary that you could have done nothing about. But a lot of the anger and frustration at other people that you might go through around boundaries is really caused by a misunderstanding about what a boundary is and who owns it. So let's talk about that. So yeah, a lot of people ask me how they can get loved ones to better honor the boundaries that they've set, how to get them to be more sensitive about their CPTSD symptoms in particular. And it's totally normal and appropriate to want that kind of support and respect. And you deserve it. But I'm going to say something very tough love here. You can ask a person to understand you and your needs, and you can even ask them to help you avoid getting triggered. You can ask, but they are not obliged to do any of it. And that doesn't mean they don't care about you, and it doesn't mean they don't support you. And in fact, when they give you space to notice your own trauma reactions and work on those in here, it might be the most loving, supportive thing that they can do. And I'm gonna tell you why, even though you've been told a lot of things to the contrary, like that you have a right to respect around your boundaries, even when your boundaries are extreme, even when you're acting out of that hurt place inside, I don't actually think it's a right, all right? A right, you have rights, but this is not exactly a right. It is your right to ask for what you want, for what you think would be helpful. It's your right to leave somebody who doesn't honor your boundaries. But trying to force other people to help you manage your trauma reactions, first of all, it's not fair. And second of all, it's not going to work. And it can end up backfiring and becoming, in effect, a form of control, you controlling other people. And everyone in our lives has the right not to be controlled by us or anyone else. So you have the right to ask and you have the right not to spend time with that person but they have the right to be themselves. Now, someone who cares about you might be willing to change the way they do things if you ask them. Uh, they might find that a reasonable thing that they can do, but they might not. It's not always something they can do, or it's not something they agree with, or they're willing to take the risk that the relationship isn't gonna work for you anymore because what you're asking is just not something they can give. And PTSD thinking will tell you that someone you love who you're attached to who's doing something that bothers you, owes it to you to change. They're a bad person if they don't. But I wanna teach you why in any situation where you're not actually restrained, that these people are not actually doing anything to you. They're being themselves, which you may or may not like, but they're not preventing your healing. And I would just point out that when you're setting boundaries, you're being yourself. So you get, to, you get to say what you like, you get to express yourself, that's you being yourself, but they get to do the same. Okay, right now, you're thinking, what? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. When people do their own thing and give you space to work out your own triggers and learn to calm your own PTSD symptoms, you then have an opportunity to learn the only thing that really works or can be sustained around changing your triggers, and that is self-regulation self-regulation. Now, when you're regulated, you have choices. So one of your choices, if you don't like what someone's doing, is to not be around that person. And for example, like if you don't like drinking alcohol, you don't like other people drinking alcohol, you don't have to be around people drinking alcohol. When your brain is regulated, you might see more clearly that this person isn't really doing anything wrong, or you might see they're really a jerk. You'll have clarity for that. Maybe they're a bully. Maybe they do drink too much. Maybe you ask them to change once or twice. And if you ask them three times and they still don't change, even if they say they will, 
They're not. You're up against that dilemma, right? To ask any more is an attempt to control them. And even if you succeed at making somebody do something like stop drinking, it's not going to bring that harmony and the good feeling of being supported and connected that we all crave. That comes from people being themselves. You're not going to be comfortable with everybody being themselves around you. You get to be choosy about that. So at the point where you've asked and they don't do it, if change isn't going to happen, you either let go of your grievance or you leave the relationship. Because if you push and push and nag and repeat your demand that they change, it'll only suck the soul out of you and everybody who hears you doing that. It's not a good life thing. It's a great idea that if someone else would change that you'd be okay. But even when you get someone to strike that bargain with you, to try to fix you by being what you want them to be, you only put your CPTSD into this little like sealed chamber that where you can't touch it. What prompts our healing is usually friction. It's problems with people. People do their thing around us and we get triggered. And it's impossible to control or avoid getting triggered. And that's why so many people with childhood trauma end up retreating, getting as far away from people as they can. Now, isolation might prevent triggers, but it also prevents a whole lot of other good things. It prevents fulfillment. It prevents connection. It prevents growth. So our challenge is to stay away from people who, who might abuse us and with everyone else to just be a little bit easier going to be at peace with people as they are. Now you do not have to be around people who trigger you when you're in the process of healing and, and, and getting triggered is just more than you can bear. But I'm asking you to keep the focus on the fact that the trigger is inside. Other people aren't really causing your trigger, like their behavior, you're reacting to it in such a way that you're triggered. But I'm trying to teach you to like take the responsibility off of them and take the control off of them and bring that responsibility and control inside where you learn to control your triggers. Peace with other people comes with accepting and knowing that healing happens inside. So other people in our lives, they totally matter. They're so dear, their behavior matters, but they don't have the power to heal us. And even if they were willing to try, you will sometimes meet somebody who will try. They can't, <laughs> they can't heal us. Have you been through this experience before where you're trying to help someone and you just know what they need and they, they even try or they do it or they don't do it, but they don't change. And it's so frustrating and painful. Or when someone tries to help you, it's probably been the other way too. It happens all the time. It could happen when you read a self-help book or you see a therapist or you ask a friend for advice or when you watch one of my videos. I can't change you, okay? I can't change you and neither can anyone else. Maybe I can influence you, but only if you want to learn from me, only if you're actually taking something from that, could you call it influence. You're gonna heal yourself when you can get the obstacles to your healing out of the way. And other people are gonna actually help you by triggering you a little bit. A little bit of triggering is a good thing to help you start practicing and learning. Now I'm not saying everything is a construct of our minds. It's not a construct of our will. You know, if only we could just heal ourselves because we decided to. It's not that simple, obviously. People do influence each other deeply for good and for evil. And this is where I suggest you put your focus on choosing carefully who will influence you and thinking carefully about how much you can expect to influence others when you ask them to change. So let's talk about what's realistic for you to expect from other people. They can potentially provide a calm, safe environment. Not everyone can do that, but that would be a good thing, a good influence. They can encourage you when you're freaked out or they can help you get your tools together so that when you're disturbed, you have a way out. For me, the tools are pen and paper. And it was a person who showed me that and who prompted me to do that. And to this day, the people closest to me are often the ones who say, hey, do you wanna write and meditate? And I actually take offense at that sometimes because <laughs> it seems like they're criticizing how I'm behaving. But I love having people to support me doing it. All in all, it's the most supportive thing that people can do is to suggest it to me and even to write and meditate with me. I love that too. You'll be amazed when you learn to regulate your trauma symptoms, the overreactions that you have, the unreasonableness, the demands that you put on other people because it seems like all that's needed is for them to change something about themselves. But 
seriously, you will be amazed how much easier it is for other people to love you and be close to you and hang out with you when you're not putting that demand on them, when you're handling it as an inside job. So how do you actually do this? When you're in the place where you want to make a demand on someone, it usually means it's time to do what I call stop and drop. Just stop the action that's escalating the conflict and drop into a chair where you can start writing your fears and resentments. Writing fears and resentments is one of the twin techniques that I teach in something I call the daily practice. I'm just talking about it here like you already know, but if you haven't tried it before, in this video and in all my videos, there's a link down in the description section. It's a free course. You can learn and try these techniques in less than an hour. See if they help you. All right. And if you do take the course, you'll be invited to Zoom calls with me every two weeks. I have them roughly every two weeks. We write together, we meditate together, and I take questions to help anybody who's trying to learn these techniques master them. And then we have some more workshops and things for, for intermediate levels too, if you're interested. But when you get relief from the fearful and resentful thoughts, things start to get clearer. The fire burns off and the truth is there. The truth is just laying there for you to see. So it's not your fault that you were abused and neglected as a kid, but now it's you. You're the one who needs to stop acting out on the trauma. And the reason is of the best possible reason. It's because it's time for you to bring forth the best in you and to stop being limited and self-hating and self-attacking because of what happened to you. That's what I hope this video will help you do. I wanna help you learn and try things and notice your triggers when they happen and develop techniques to calm them, okay? Some people are gonna be very open to learning what you're working on and they're gonna support you, but probably when you're yelling at them and telling them how they need to act, it's gonna defeat the purpose. People are gonna pull back from you. And that's, that's the most painful thing about CPTSD is that disconnection that it imposes. So, so how can you get there? How do you get neutral? You'll hear me say this a lot. It helps if you don't talk about it. When you're triggered and you know it, just pause. Just mm, your thinking is getting dysregulated. If it's anger, then by definition, it's gonna feel unreasonable to other people. It's an argument that's trying to happen, but you'd be better off not having that argument. So if you have to argue, just remind yourself, you can have an argument later. You, you don't have to suppress your, the fight in you, just have it later. Later is always better because when you're regulated again, when you can choose your words and not just have them fly out of you, out of that triggered place, that CPTSD thing where your brain is doing its thing, that's gonna cause damage. It would be crazy for me to tell you that you can do this. I know how, like what a strong grip CPTSD symptoms have on us. But it's not crazy because there is in fact a way to get regulated. We can do that. It starts with owning the problem, not blaming other people, not blaming them with our words, not blaming them in our minds, like believing that other people are doing this to us because healing can really move forward fast when we can just recognize, ah, I'm having a CPTSD reaction. It's a reaction that I have. And then this is the hard part. Resist the urge to say a lot about how you're feeling. You can say something like, Oh dear, I'm having one of my reactions. <laughs> Hold on a sec while I get myself sorted out. But don't wave your triggered feelings out there like a flag. It's like, I'm triggered, this is so bad, you're doing this to me. You're not gonna get a good reaction and trying to get other people to deal with your reactions. Has it ever worked well? So this is your new approach. You notice your triggers, you calm them, you own them. You give yourself a little time out to write your fears and resentments and that will work wonders for you to return to the conversation and have communication about whatever's bothering you. You can say it in a way that will be heard. After that, whatever you need to discuss is going to be simpler and lighter and easier for another person to hear. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that they're a good caring person who can hear you. Sometimes you're gonna run into that, but you can do your part towards that good communication. You're gonna get better results, no matter, even if they're a jerk. So it's a good thing when it happens. The nicest feeling of all is knowing that whatever happens, whatever present day reaction rises up out of your childhood trauma, you will be able to deal with it. You are in the time now when you can begin to bring the best part of you forward. The best part of you can start running your life. You do not have to be identified anymore with the old triggers and the old events that happened. You are in there somewhere and we need you. Now, if you're resonating like crazy, 
about the problem of connection with other people, you might want to take this quiz that I developed. It's called the Connection Quiz. It's also down in the description section below the video. You'll find it down there. Um, you might have to open up the description section with the more link. This is a huge topic for a lot of people and I've got a lot more content on it starting with this video right here which you might want to take a look at and I will see you very soon.